Hello, my name is Jim, and welcome to today's episode of Lumanjaro. Today we're going to be talking about the DeWalt DCV501 20 volt dry cordless handheld vacuum. A lot of words, all it is is it's a handheld vacuum, takes their DeWalt 20 volt batteries on the back here, and it's meant for dry things. You can't use it to suck up water or anything like that. It's a pretty standard vacuum here. It's got a one inch uh, port on the front, on the nozzle here. It's got a LED up here that's supposed to illuminate what you're vacuuming, but it's not really bright enough to really do a whole lot. Maybe if you're in the dark, it might be a little bit helpful, but if there's any light at all, it's not really bright enough. You know, most of the time you're gonna be vacuuming stuff out here. Not super handy. I do very much like that it's got a switch on top instead of a trigger. It makes it a lot easier. You just flick the switch on. You don't have to worry about it once it's on. Not a big deal if you accidentally drop your vacuum and the, the power stays on to it. So I like that they put a switch on it. They also put this rather comically large belt hook on here. I don't know why this gap here is so big. It's not big enough that you could like hang it on a 2x4 or something like that. But it's so wide that it makes it a little uh, clumsy to hang it hanging on your belt. It works okay, but it just bounces around a lot and is a lot less secure than I would have liked. In addition to the vacuum, you get a whole bunch of accessories. You get the owner's manual in case you don't know how vacuums work. You get a little flexible hose, which I would actually find pretty handy. You can hook this on your belt and then just put your hand on the end of the hose here and use that to do your vacuuming. You don't have to be moving this whole thing around all the time. You get a straight pipe, which is meant to work with the floor attachment. However, it's a very short pipe there. And you get this brush attachment. And this other brush attachment, I like this one actually a lot for cleaning off workbenches. And this one's pretty good for cleaning off crevices and things like that. And then of course you get the crevice attachment itself. You also get a whole bunch of bags because they decided they needed to put each one of these attachments in a separate bag. I don't know why that's necessary. It seems like just a waste of plastic and it was a waste of my time unwrapping all those different things. The vacuum itself is very straightforward. Obviously you turn the switch on, it goes on. To change the, the dust bin here, you just push this little button up top here and it flips right off. And then you take the filter out, you shake it out, and you know, that's how you change it. Now, it does say it's a HEPA filter. It seems like a lot of waste to me to put a HEPA filter on a vacuum like this. I'm going to be using it in my shop where there's sawdust flying around all over the place. Having a little bit higher efficiency dust collection on it isn't going to make a difference in the air quality in my shop. And HEPA filters are a lot more uh, delicate than you know, a less efficient filter. So it's kind of silly that it, they put that efficient of a filter on to a little handheld vacuum like this. The last accessory is this little mesh bag, and that's to hold all the other stuff, including the vacuum, keep them all organized and everything. Of course, I'm just going to put it all on a shelf and eventually lose all the different accessories, but if you're more organized, they'll keep everything together. It is a little bit small, though, so if you try to keep the floor attachment in it with the floor piece on it, it's going to stick out the end, which is a bit of a bummer. I assume that they thought you would take the pipe off the end of the floor attachment if you're going to put it in there, but that seems like a lot of extra work. The vacuum itself uh, is pretty nice to hold. It's pretty well made. This, however, is not the same plastic that you'll get on a DeWalt drill. So you can see the color looks a little different than on this drill here. That's because this is ABS without glass fiber in it, so the, the color is a little, more, a little bit more vibrant and stands out a little bit better. It's probably not a big deal. This is a, a bigger piece of plastic, so they probably didn't want to go through the added expense. This is a fairly inexpensive tool, so that's probably why they used ABS. It's probably not going to get dropped and tossed around as much as the drill does, so it's probably not a big deal. It does have this nice large rubber foot on the side here, but of course if it falls like that, it's going to be the end of it. Now this vacuum will take any of the 20 volt to volt batteries. It'll take these tiny little power stack batteries or these big old monster flex volt batteries. They all work just fine. These do seem to make it suck a little bit harder. Um, I'm going to show that in a minute. We'll actually measure how much air this is pulling, but it does sound a little bit like it's pulling a little bit harder with these big batteries, but even with the little batteries, it seems to have plenty of suction. I really like the va using the vacuum like this with this wide brush on the end and this tiny little battery on the other end. It lets me clean off things like my workbench. Works super easily get, because of the, it's fairly wide, it's pretty quick to use, and it's nice and light and easy to hold around. Now the problem with this accessory though is it, it slides, the brush part slides off, which would be a nice thing. Then you get this nice flush mount here, might be, let you get a little bit more suction on things. Honestly though, I found this type of uh, kind of nozzle here to be much more effective when sucking up water. So on my big shop vac, I ha like having a uh, nozzle like that. If I want to suck up water that's laying on the floor, I find that works really well. I don't find it very useful for dry stuff. Most of the time, if it's sawdust or anything, having just a flat bottom like that, you're not going to be able to pick up the sawdust, you're just going to push it around. And the problem is that this has no positive retention on the end of here, so it just slides off and on, and so I keep knocking it to the side and end up 
running like that half the time and it's pretty irritating. So I wish they had designed this with just a little detent to hold it in place at the end. It would be a lot better. This other brush I like putting on the end here too. That works really well to get into crevices and things. I find that's really nice. As I started the vacuum up earlier, you could hear it's fairly loud. You know, of course it's a vacuum, it's going to be pretty loud. It's not the super loud vacuum of like a shop vac or something like that. It's not super quiet like a Festool dust extractor though, but it's perfectly nice. You know, it's not going to bother anybody when you're using it if you're using it for a couple minutes here or there. Got you kind of in the dirty corner of my shop over here so that you can see how this floor attachment works on the end of the vacuum here. So this is what's typically on the floor of my shop. A mix of sawdust, little bits of aluminum, some other metal shavings, other screws and various other just debris that kind of accumulates over time. So let's see how this vacuum handles that. Now the first thing I noticed though is that this vacuum is really too short. This hose really needs to be quite a bit longer for it to be comfortable for me. As it is, I've got to keep it too much upright and it doesn't really work super well. So it would be a lot nicer if that pipe was quite a bit longer. So let's turn this on and see how it works. So you can see right there the problem with this vacuum. The floor attachment is terrible on it. At the base in here, this clogs all the time when I try to use it. So there wasn't a ridiculous amount of sawdust on the floor, but it just ends up clogging this spot right here. The problem is in the inside here, there's just a flat face. There's no streamlining to bring up into the hose. There's this flat face here where dust gets caught on and it ends up clogging almost instantly. So unfortunately that makes this floor attachment pretty much worthless. So I wanted to compare this DeWalt to a couple other vacuums might, you might be considering or just to see how they, it compares in its suction power. This is also kind of the story of how I ended up with this vacuum. So for a long time in my shop I've had this little shop vac which I found really handy but of course it's corded. It's nice and small, I can carry it around but I put a decent sized hose on it if I want to just leave it somewhere I can vacuum off the mill or any of my other tools or uh, you know, table saws or whatever and it works quite well. But of course it's very loud and most importantly it's got a cord on it which is a bit of a pain. In my house, we've been using for many years this Dyson V6 cordless vacuum, which you know, has a long floor attachment on the end of it to vacuum the carpets. And I really like this. It works super well and it sucks very nicely. It's very easy to use. And it doesn't clog because of their fancy little cyclones up here. However, eventually this got to be too old. The battery crapped out on it. I replaced the battery. A couple of years later, it started having some problems that it doesn't, wouldn't always work real well. The brush on the end of the, the floor attachment died. So we decided to replace it with this Dyson V10, which I also really like and it's fantastic. When I replaced this vacuum upstairs though, this one got to come down into the shop and I thought it'd be really useful to clean without having to lug around the cord and all that contraption. The problem with this is twofold. The first is that the dust collector in the bottom is really small. This is going to fill up with sawdust almost instantly. And then the port between the, the nozzle here and where it starts to swirl around is very small, so this would clog at that entrance there all the time and you know it's not what it's meant for it's not meant to be used in a shop and it doesn't really work super well but this gave me a taste for having a nice handheld cordless vacuum and so when I saw this DeWalt I figured I'd give it a shot. Now this DeWalt turns out to suffer from a lot of the same problems that this Dyson does though. The port between the, ho the hose here and this dust container is also really small and so that'll clog there and the other thing is that it doesn't have that big a dust collection cup at the end either so you can't really use it to suck up a bunch of sawdust. Now this has the other problem that this HEPA filter that it comes with clogs very easily and you can't really get it completely clean. I've used this a couple times, I tried my best to, to clean it out but at the bottom of all these little crevices here sawdust just builds up and you can't get it out. Now I would normally just blow it out with an air compressor but it specifically says on the side here not to do that so I haven't do that eventually I probably will just break down and do that anyway and not worry so much about it. So I wanted to measure how much each one of these vacuums sucks so what I've done here is I took this handy dandy box that they gave me and in one end I cut a hole that this nozzle will fit, on the, fit into just like that and on the other end I cut a bigger hole that I could put my anemometer on and that will measure how much air is coming out the end. So that way I can compare the different ones and also compare the different batteries on this vacuum here. So let's set that up and do a couple tests. We've got the DeWalt vacuum hooked up here with one of the small power stack batteries. Let's see how it goes with that one here. So I've got this set for feet per second. 
just to take read the max when I put it over the end here. So let's see how that goes. So that reads 20.96 feet per second. Let's switch to the bigger battery and see what the difference is. So that reads 22.65, so it's about 10% more. It's not a huge difference, but it obviously is a little bit more with that. Now let's compare it to some of the other vacuums here. Okay, next up we have the old Dyson V6. So this is obviously seen better days, but just let's just see how much it goes for as well. Now this doesn't conveniently fit on the end here, so I'm gonna have to hold this. So this only got 10 feet per second, so it's quite a bit slower than this big one here. Now for the new Dyson, this is the V10. So it's also on the boost mode here. The other one was on the max mode. So this also has a little notch here where a little button goes when you stick the Dyson uh, connectors on the end. So that's gonna let a little bit of air escape. So it's not completely fair, but we'll give it a shot anyway. So that got 14.67 feet per second. So quite a bit faster. Let's try this little shop vac now. Now it does have a fairly long hose on it, which isn't completely fair because the other ones I wasn't using any hose. And it does use a fair amount of suction to pull all the air through this hose, particularly this corrugated type of hose as opposed to like a smooth pipe. However, this is a corded thing and this is how I usually use it, right? I usually don't have it, you know, right up against what I'm vacuuming on. So I think it's a reasonably fair test. Now they claim this is a two and a half horsepower shop vac. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. They call it two and a half peak horsepower, whatever that means, but um, that's what they claim for if you're curious. So let's fire this up and see how much air it moves. So that got to 28.6 feet per second. So almost double the big Dyson and 50% more than the DeWalt itself. But of course this is a corded unit, so it's not a completely fair comparison. Last interesting thing about this vacuum is that it's made in Thailand. I haven't seen any DeWalt power tools made in Thailand before. Usually DeWalt stuff is made in China or Mexico or of course the US. So kind of interesting that they have a plant there now. So what I actually think about this tool, well, it's kind of a mixed bag. On the one hand, it is nice and portable, it's easy to use, it does suck very well, it's no problem picking up even fairly heavy you know, uh, metal shavings and things like that. But there's a couple little things that really bother me and make it not nearly as nice to use as it would be otherwise. The big, biggest one is the size of the dust canister here. So this dust canister is very small. I assume they did that to try to keep the filter clear so that the air comes in in a kind of cyclonic action and it ends up trying to clear the filter and all the dust should fall at the end here, but it's really small and I think they could have had the same effect if they had extended the length of this cup, not made it any larger diameter, but extended the length to be kind of up to here. That would have made it a lot more useful. If you're using this to clean up after like a circular saw or a router or something that's creating a lot of sawdust, this fills up almost instantly and clogs the filter very quickly and doesn't work very well. The other thing is that inside here, as this pipe here transitions into the filter, they've got a little spot where it kind of kicks off to the side to start swir swirling that air. And that ends up being a choke point and dust clogs in there all the time. So that's a bit of a pain. Now in some of the accessories, they seem like they were not particularly well thought out. Putting the mold line right here so that there's a sharp burrow right, right where you hold your hand. It's obvious that the guy who designed this never actually went out and used it or he did and realized that, but of course didn't want to change the mold at that point. So that's a bit of a bummer. The floor vacuum is pr particularly agrarious though. The fact that there's just a flat spot on the inside there. I'm not sure you can see that very well, but there's no like streamlining up from this kind of cavity on the bottom here into the hose. It's just kind of a flat face and this clogs all the time. Can't really use it to, to vacuum the floor. Same thing with the length of this hose or this pipe here. I don't know why this isn't like six inches longer. It'd be a lot nicer to use if this was a little bit longer. Once again, I think it's that the guy who designed this didn't ever actually use the tool. So it's a lot of little oversights like that. So at the end of the day, this was not a very expensive vacuum. It's only about $100. Now, of course, that doesn't include a battery. It's a lot cheaper than those Dysons I mentioned earlier. So I think it is useful. And of course, it works a lot better than having to lug around a corded shop vac all the time. So it is handy to have, but it's just not the best design tool in the world. Thanks for watching. If you disagree or there's another shop vac kind of handheld one like this that you prefer, let me know in the comments below. See you next time.